which is laid out. No, counselor. The jury is representative of community standards, not a pile of magazines. Welcome to Watch Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 real person cameos. I'm gonna have a cheeseburger deluxe with a Coke. Okay. Your hunch is a backfire before, though. Or have you forgotten about that already? People are very strange this day. Oh, hi, Betty. For this list, we'll be looking at the times films based on factual events featured one or more people that were actually part of the real life story. Which of these cameos stood out the most? Tell us about your favorite in the comments below. Number 10, Brian Hartnell, Zodiac. Although neither Robert Graysmith, the author of the Zodiac book, nor the real Zodiac killer, as far as we know, don't appear in the story about a terrifying crime spree, one of the victims does. A scene early in the film accurately recreates Zodiac's brutal attack on Brian Hartnell and Cecilia Shepard at Lake Berryessa in California, with actors in those roles. Don't move! I want your money and your car keys. Okay. We're not going to do anything, okay? We're going to cooperate. While Cecilia tragically passed away, Hartnell survived. <laughs> it's okay. This is all going to be okay. As one of the few survivors of the Zodiac's attacks, the real Hartnell was brought on as a consultant. But eagle-eyed viewers can also spot him strolling through the background after a suspect is cleared by a handwriting expert. Hey, what do you want? Time off? A hug. Do you know what the worst part of this is? I can't tell if I wanted it to be Alan so bad because I actually thought it was him or I just want all this to be over. Number 9. Chris Gardner, The Pursuit of Happiness The film ends with Smith's Gardner getting a steady job after a year of homelessness. Would you like that, Chris? Yes, sir. Good. We couldn't be happier. As he and his son walk out of the shot in the final scene, a seemingly random man in a suit crosses their path. Smith looks at the stranger for a moment before both continue on exiting opposite directions. Hey, Dad, listen to this. Knock, knock. Oh, who's there? As you might have guessed, that random stranger is none other than the actual Chris Gardner. The quiet cameo is perfect. Seeing this movie stranger wearing this sharp suit represents the heights Gardner would go on to achieve. This point really hits home as the text during the epilogue tells us he'd go on to sell a brokerage firm for millions. Number 8. Frank Abagnale, Catch Me If You Can Your son has been pretending to be a substitute teacher, lecturing the students, uh, giving out homework. Uh, for years, Frank Abagnale spent a lot of time impersonating other people, so it only made sense for him to pretend to be someone else in the movie about his own life. Catch Me If You Can follows Leonardo DiCaprio portraying the con artist. We watch as he impersonates the likes of airplane pilots, doctors, and lawyers. The signature on the letters that he wrote to Mrs. Simon, which discussed the possibility of defrauding the great state of Louisiana. Your Honor, ladies and gentlemen of the jury, this is irrefutable evidence that the defendant is in fact lying. He even briefly pretends to be a secret service agent. While his misdeeds eventually catch up to him, he's arrested by French law enforcement. The officer that leads him to the police car is ironically the real Frank Abagnale. I got him. It's all right. It's all right. I got him. Move up there, Victor. Hey, I want it. I want it on the record. Number 7. Eddie Popeye Egan and Sonny Cloudy Grosso, The French Connection Like Zodiac, this duo did double duty by appearing in cameos while also serving as technical advisors. Do you believe all this crap? I go with my part. What'll it take? Eddie Egan, nicknamed Popeye, served as the inspiration for Jimmy Popeye Doyle, and Sonny Grosso inspired Cloudy Rosso. They played Captain Simonson and FBI agent Klein respectively in the film, adapted from a book based on their real exploits as detectives. Okay, please print your name on both tickets before you board the plane. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Have a nice flight. 
Both men seemed to enjoy the movie so much that they retired from law enforcement and pursued careers in film. Egan went on to star in movies like Badge 373, and Grosso appeared behind and in front of the camera in films like The Godfather. Journey for the Corleone family. These men are private detectives hired to protect Vito Corleone. They're licensed to carry firearms. Number 6. Larry Flint – The People vs. Larry Flint Larry Flint, the bombastic founder of the <clears throat> adult magazine Hustler, saw his life chronicled by director Milos Forman. But I uh, could get in trouble printing these. Why? Because they're, they're laws. You gotta have some sort of text, like Playboy does. When Flint was sued for the content of his magazines, he became a defender of free speech. Woody Harrelson did an excellent job bringing the magazine founder to life and depicting his legal struggles. Larry Claxton Flint! Yeah. Stand up, please, sir. Put your hands behind your back. What's this all about? You're under arrest on charges of pandering obscenity in Cincinnati and engaging in organized crime. Organized oh, no. crime? Early in the film, he defends his magazine in a Cincinnati court. The judge presiding over the case was none too pleased with Flint, and he lost this early struggle. The presiding judge was, of course, played by none other than, you guessed it, Larry Flint. Knock yourself out. I sentence you to 25 years in your what? high penitentiary. Number 5. Aaron Brockovich Aaron Brockovich Despite being a legal clerk without a formal education in law, Aaron Brockovich was instrumental in the case that took on Pacific Gas and Electric and won. No, that's, that's, not, what, that's not what our doctor said. He said that, well, that one's got absolutely nothing to do with the other. But PG&E paid for that doctor. When the David and Goliath story was adapted to film seven years later, A-lister Julia Roberts played Brockovich. Mm, this is a whole different ballgame. Not a much bigger deal. Kind of like David and what's his name? In one scene, she takes her family to a restaurant. The waitress taking their order is played by the actual Aaron Brockovich. Okay, I'm gonna have a cheeseburger deluxe with a Coke. Okay. Mommy, can I have a cheeseburger deluxe with no cheese and no bread? Did you get that? Yeah. If you look closely, you'll notice something that makes the scene even more meta. A name tag reveals that the waitress is actually named Julia. Number 4. Jim Lovell – Apollo 13 In one of his most iconic roles, Tom Hanks stepped into the shoes of the storied astronaut Jim Lovell during his historic and tragic Apollo 13 mission to the moon. Apollo 13 was the most unusual flight. Uh, being on a flight that had an accident 200,000 miles from and getting back safely. When an oxygen tank ignited and caused an explosion on the spacecraft, the planned lunar landing was aborted. Lovell, who commanded the mission, was left with limited oxygen and an ever-growing list of dangers. Hey. Uh, this is Houston. Uh, say again, please. Houston, we have a problem. But he admirably and heroically managed to bring everyone aboard home alive. After touching down in the Pacific, the crew were picked up by the USS Iwo Jima. The real life level played a different savior by portraying the ship's captain in the film. And as for me, the seven extraordinary days of Apollo 13 were my last in space. Number 3. Jordan Belford, The Wolf of Wall Street Martin Scorsese turned the memoir of a cutthroat real estate stockbroker into a morality tale about greed in the golden age of capitalism. I always wanted to be rich, so let me go back. I'm 22 years old, newly married, and already a money-crazed little shit. So what do I do? I go to the one place on earth that befit my high-minded ambitions. The living avatar of that avarice is Jordan Belfort, the titular Wolf of Wall Street. Leonardo DiCaprio makes his second appearance on this list by playing another larger-than-life figure. Pick up the phone and start dialing. I want you to deal with your problems by becoming rich! By the end of the film, Belfort is working as a sales seminar host in a scene that reveals how truly alone he is. Before he takes the stage, the crowd is whipped into a fever pitch by someone else that is extremely excited about Belfort. So I want you right now to give a warm Auckland, New Zealand welcome for my good friend and the world's greatest 
sales trainer, Mr. Jordan Belfort. Seeing as this hype man was played by the real life Jordan Belfort, it isn't hard to see why he's so complimentary. Number two, Hunter S. Thompson, fear and loathing in Las Vegas. Ignore this terrible drug. Yeah, pretend it's not happening. This is the rare cameo by the real person in a film where they're actually acknowledged as themselves. The film is based on the novel by Thompson, which blends events from his real life with fabrications that are all centered on adventures he had while taking various substances. This is not a good town for psychedelic drugs. Extremely menacing vibrations were all around us. We finally made it to the room, but the key wouldn't open the door. In one sequence, the fictional Thompson character known as Raoul Duke and who's played by Johnny Depp, reminisces about a prior trip. Suddenly, he notices a version of himself played by the actual Hunter S. Thompson. There I was. Mother of God, there I am. The unique blend of unreliable narration, psychedelic substance, and Terry Gilliam's visuals makes this a one-of-a-kind cameo. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Tommy Wiseau, The Disaster Artist And I go back to my dream. And everybody say, you're such a crazy guy, you're such a stupid guy. I say, I don't care. I'll do it. Yes. I know I can do it. I get that. The disaster artist recounted Greg Sestero's friendship and time working with Tommy Wiseau on one of the best worst films ever made, The Room. Wiseau's bizarre mannerisms, eccentric decisions, and vaguely Eastern European accent were all recreated by James Franco. I did not hit her. It's not true. It's bullshit. I did not hit her. I did not. Oh, hi, Mark. Those that stuck through the credits were treated to a scene where Franco's Wiseau is approached by a strange mustachioed guest at a party. The guest's odd inflections and seemingly random dialogue made him as off-putting and bizarre as the fictional Wiseau. That is, of course, because Franco was acting against the real Tommy Wiseau. You think you have long hair, you own the world, that's the idea? I stop huh? you, I stop you right there. What is this accent? It sounds familiar. You from New Orleans? Yeah, so what? Seeing the pair of them play off each other was hilarious in the weirdest way. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Watch Mojo, and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.